is a mainstream belief regarding vitamin B12 deficiency on a vegan or vegetarian diet. What is your take on this? B12 is a very misunderstood nutrient. For starters, there is no animal that produces B12. It's manufactured as the excrement of a specific type of bacteria. We need that excrement, we utilize that excrement, but it is simply the excrement of a bacteria. That bacteria must have the proper nutrients available to it, one of them being cobalt. And so in an environment where there is no cobalt, the bacteria will not produce sufficient amounts of cyanocobalamin or methylcobalamin or the various cobalamins that we call B12. But B12 isn't just about getting enough of it, it's also about our ability to uptake B12. And so there are two parts, there's the extrinsic uptake of B12 and the intrinsic ability or the, the extrinsic exposure to B12 and then the intrinsic ability for us to uptake and utilize B12. Fortunately, B12 bacteria or the bacteria that produce B12 are ubiquitous, meaning they're found almost everywhere. One of the places that they're commonly found is on the, the dirt that accumulates on the outside of fresh organic fruits and vegetables. So near the stem of an apple, where the apple meets the, the stem, you usually notice there's a little buildup of some, some earth and dirt and dust. It's rich in B12 in that area. That's the part we throw away, typically, but it's the part that's got the most B12. But on your broccoli and on your cauliflower and on your vegetables that, that have dust on them, on that dust are the bacteria that... We're talking about B12 and, and its ubiquitous nature, that, that B12, the bacteria that produce B12, are actually found in the mucous membranes of your nasopharynx. Every time you swallow, you're swallowing just a little tiny bit of B12. Every time you clear your throat, there's B12 colonies living in your intestines. We actually, essentially, manufacture our own B12 by being host to these bacteria. But, like all the stress vitamins, B12 is affected by our lifestyle. And our need for B12, our use and ability to uptake it is all affected by our lifestyle, not just how much we take in. Now, it's, there's a lot in the B12 story, but at this day in, in time, what we find is that in the in the mainstream world, B12 deficiency is a big problem. B12 deficiency was discovered in people on a mainstream diet. B12 deficiency is no more common amongst vegetarians, vegans, or raw fooders than it is amongst the mainstream population. It's been proven that if a person goes B12 deficient, that if they start eating a bunch of meat, it will not help their B12 deficiency in any way. In fact, in today's world, farmers inject B12 into their cows because the cows also are becoming B12 deficient due to, due to the, the conditions where these cows are being raised, due to the antibiotics that they're being given, due to the various, what are called, antivitamins that they're exposed to as part of their lifestyle. And if we read labels, what we'll see is that on various breads, cereals, pastas, and other complex carbohydrate foods, they're enriched with B12. Essentially, people on the mainstream diet are not having B12 problems each and every person because they are supplementing with B12 at almost every meal. When we stop consuming complex carbohydrates, and especially enriched ones, 
for a while, our B12 levels may sink low, but typically they'll come back up, rise to normal functional levels, and we can go through living a healthy life without ever thinking about B12 supplementation any more than any creature would. Of course, if a person has a problem, by all means, solve the problem. But we come up with two main options for solving a B12 problem. One is to just supplement and supplement and supplement and keep causing the problem. The other would be to buy yourself a little bit of time by supplementing and then correct the problem, eliminate the cause. Is it too much stress? Is it too much frozen food? Is it, is it not enough sleep? Is it whatever the problem may be that's resulting in B12 deficiency symptoms? Fortunately, with B12 deficiency symptoms, they are slow to onset, they are slow to develop, you get months and months and months of accumulation of symptoms before anything even remotely dangerous will occur. Uh, irreversible symptoms typically take years to before they accumulate, and, and it's incredibly easy to find out if you are B12 deficient. There are five different types of tests for B12 deficiency, and each of them are considered to be inaccurate by the people who recommend the other four tests. I tend to agree. All five tests for B12 deficiency are inaccurate and very expensive, ranging from a hundred to almost a thousand dollars to do tests that give you inaccurate results because of the inability to discern between analog forms and real forms, usable forms, of B12. But there's an easy test, and the test costs either a dollar or two, or it's free. You can either buy some B12 tablets and take them and see if you feel remarkably better within a few days, or you can borrow some B12 tablets from somebody who already has some, and they'll give you four or five tabs, and you take them one a day for four or five days, and if you feel remarkably better, well then you are B12 deficient. You need to address it in your lifestyle. If you feel no difference whatsoever, then you probably weren't B12 deficient, and you can go on with your business.